I'm very excited to present our first speaker. Uh, I work in television, I worked for Comcast for 20 years, and we all know that television is quickly becoming a thing of the past because it's two dimensional, it's too flat, it hasn't changed much in the 20 years that I've been in the business. Maybe the production side has, but not what you see on your screen. So when I heard about our first speaker, and she started in traditional television and storytelling at CNN, but she's changing it. She's working in augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. She's working to make storytelling three-dimensional, six-dimensional, or holographic, and connecting people across the world. So she's a proud Latina, born in the Dominican Republic, Costa Rica. <laughs> um, Kathy Hackle, a futurist, welcome to the stage. Thank you. My presentation with Pressycast, which is kind of their augmented reality product, which is fantastic. Um, this is one of the few, you know, the, this is one of the few events where you've been able to see something like this. So I'm really excited to be able to share this. Um, so, Paola, thanks for your kind words. Uh, I want to start by telling you guys how I got into tech. So, back in 2004, I used to work at, at CNN, and part of my job there was to watch all the raw footage that was coming in from the war in Iraq. So when you have to watch things of that nature, you have to turn, you know, when you have that type of job, you have to turn the humanity switch off just a little bit to get by. And it wasn't until I had my first virtual reality experience that I didn't feel like I was able to turn it, you know, fully back on. I put on a headset, an HTC Vive, and I went into an experience called confinement by The Guardian that put me in a, in a six by nine solitary confinement cell. Within three or four minutes, I felt completely claustrophobic, took the headset off, and I said several things. I said, this is the future of storytelling on some level, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So how the heck do I go from journalism, PR marketing, into tech? So I started just getting out there, going to all the events I could, getting that face-to-face -face time with the leaders, started connecting, and I found amazing mentors along the way. I found amazing people. And the very important part that I want to share with you guys is that most of those mentors were Latino women. That, you know, they're the ones that helped me. So Ebony Mirades from the NASA, she's running the, she's run the VR lab over there for over 20 years. She's one of the people that inspired me to learn some, you know, to learn some basic technical skills so I was able to develop a little bit in virtual reality. Then Noni de la Peña, I'm not sure if you guys saw her in Austin, but I'm a, I'm a, she's an amazing person. She's called the godmother of VR. The godmother of VR is a Latina woman. And she's my friend, yes. And she inspires me every day. Um, something very special happened uh, last week with Noni. She actually got featured on the cover of the Wall Street Journal's, Wall Street Journal Magazine's Innovators issue. So I think that says a lot about where we're going as Latina women in supporting each other. Um, you know, I, I kind of want to, you know, I want to inspire you guys, but I also want to kind of share a little bit about my world and the world I work in, because a lot of people are interested. So how many of you guys out here um, have tried VR? You know, most of you guys, I would guess in that. Augmented reality on Snapchat and, you know, Instagram, all of you guys. Um, so, you know, I think that people always think about, oh, this is something that's happening now. This is, you know, VR and AR is something that's, been, you know, especially AR, it's something that's been happening, now, happening for a long time. Humans have always wanted to augment the reality, whether it was painting on caves, you know, to thinking about the first time that you ever really experienced some type of augmentation. And for me, I usually go back to this moment. This was, I was, you know, probably seven or eight years, seven or eight years old, and I went to Disney World, and I went into the Haunted Mansion. So many of you guys are smiling because you've been there, you know what happens. Spoiler alert, um, you're in there, you know, at the end of the ride, you're in this little, like, car, little like thing, a vehicle with your parents, you know, with your dad, mom or dad. And at the end, when you're coming out, you look at this mirror and all of a sudden there's a ghost sitting right next to you in your mom and dad. And you're like, freak out, you're like, oh my God, that's crazy, right? And it probably looked a little bit like this. That was probably your face at that moment, right? This is a very special picture. This is from an event we did in Atlanta, that's where I'm based. Um, and we did a virtual reality, augmented reality workshop for young women in STEM. So we had all kinds of, you know, all kinds of ethnicities and, uh, and ages, and it was fantastic. And one of the things we did was also do demos. I'm very lucky that I actually get to do work with Magic Leap, which some of you guys might know, might not know, but it's a very uh, amazing startup out of Florida. 
And uh, I was able to do some demos. And what this young woman here is, is looking at is actually a giant whale swimming through the skyline of Atlanta. Yeah. And it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing when you're able to show young women these type of, this type of technologies. You see something light up. You see this, like, I, I really call it um, kind of that we're doing magic. You know, I feel like people in my industry, and people in tech in general and emerging tech, we're kind of the magicians of the 21st century. We're the Houdinis. We're the people that are out there, out there doing these things that totally amaze people. Um, Arthur C. Clarke, I think, said it best when he said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, you know, the reality of where we are today, while, you know, I work with all these really advanced tech companies, with Magic Leap and Mozilla and do all these amazing things with hardware. I think that right now, the reality is that, you know, our phones, I can't lie right here, of course, <laughs> our phones are our portals. You know, they become extensions of who we are and what we're doing. So um, I was actually able to organize an event a couple weeks ago in New York called Mixed Reality Marketing Summit. And we had Carolina Arguelles from Snapchat, amazing Latina in, in, in AR. Um, give a talk about how they see marketing going. Where do they see it going? And they call it camera marketing. You think about it, when you go to Snapchat and you open the app, where does it go immediately? It goes to your camera. Because they see this, they understand that more and more we're living our world for, for our cameras and our phones and our cameras are our portals. So where are we going with all of this? You know, as connectivity, connectivity improves, 5G, 5G+, plus, whatever's coming, you know, content is going to be enhanced. And just like Paola mentioned, content is changing. I would say content is expanding. It's expanding beyond content that is 2D and flat to content that is 3D, 360, augmented, and holographic. And that's a sea change. If you were watching the World Cup, which I'm sure a lot of you guys were, <laughs> I'm sure about it, uh, you probably saw a lot of, you know, there were holograms, there was augmented reality. There are all these technologies being used and changing the way we consume content. And that's only going to accelerate. And the reality is that eventually what's going to happen is that content, as we understand it, is going to break free from the screens. Okay, we're going to move eventually from our handsets to our headsets and beyond. So where are we heading? Um, one of the things I want to kind of talk to you guys about today is kind of where we're heading in, in the VR, AR space as Latinas. Uh, is anyone here in that space? Is anyone in my industry here? Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah, of course, I know. Um, one of, like I mentioned, it's, it was really important for me when I started to see women like me doing this type of work. And I've been able to get to where I am because mo mostly because of women and Latinas especially, and then some of the you know men and allies that have supported me. But it's an amazing opportunity. VR and AR is a little bit different than the rest of tech. If you go to a VR AR conference, you actually will notice that there's, you know, there's still an imbalance, and we, we've had our issues, but there's still a lot of women in the space, and there's a lot of minorities. And I think it's because we're opening up this new wave of creativity, a new wave of creativity where you can be whoever you want to be. When you start thinking about identity in the world of virtual reality and augmented reality, when you put on a headset and you go in there as an avatar, you can be anyone. You can be anything. And I think that changes the paradigm. I also think it's an amazing moment for women, for Latina especially, to get into this industry. Uh oh. Let's see. There you go. Okay. Um, so we're blending slowly, we're blending the physical and the di digital. And um, there's a term up here that says XR. You guys have probably never heard that term or have heard it only from the iPhone. <laughs> Um, but basically, we've got several terms. So we've got virtual reality, which basically means uh, you put on a headset and you are transported into a new world. So you put on a headset and you're completely, you know, I'm not here, I'm somewhere else, whether it's a 360 video or whether it's a, you know, a, a CGI uh, created environment. So VR takes you to a different world. Augmented reality, on the other hand, kind of adds to your world. So. Uh, many of you guys were probably out there playing Pokemon Go. I saw people running around with their phones like crazy, with their, you know, trying to find Pokemon. It adds a digital element to your world. Okay. Then there's another term called mixed reality. And mixed reality is when these digital elements that you're adding to a world are spatially aware. 
you know, when, for example, Pikachu actually knows that there's a couch there, and that if he sits there, sits there and falls, he's gonna roll off. So it's pretty, you know, pretty amazing. Then the industry also uses a term called XR, which to some people is extended reality. There's some debate there, but we even use it as a term, kind of an umbrella term to cover VR, AR, MR, and any other realities that might come after that. So if you hear me use the term XR, that's what I'm referring to. I'm referring to this umbrella of all these augmentation and virtualization of all the things that are coming. Thank you. Awesome. And um, I think it's really important to frame the conversation also around all these emerging technologies. Because while I love VR and AR and MR, XR, <laughs> um, I think it's really important to realize that this in my industry is not gonna move forward without all the other people working in you know, blockchain, 5G, AI, machine learning, you name it. But this is all about where we're going. And it's all about all these emerging technologies. So I think that's also a huge opportunity for us as Latinas. I'm sure there's plenty of women here that are in some shape or form in the blockchain space that are, you know, are working in AI, et cetera. So we're all kind of working to move things together. And uh, I needed to be over here and nail it, but oh well. <laughs> so we're not yet in the holodeck, so if you're a Star Trek fan, you know exactly what I'm referring to. We're not there yet, guys. We're not there, we're not there yet. But what if I told you that there are companies, stealth startups, that are working on creating a holodeck? What if I told you that there's a, star a stealth startup out of London that came out of, the, out of a stealth just today uh, that does Natural, natural, they do natural dubbing of video. So what they're doing is basically you can record a video, let's say you're a YouTuber, you record a video and you put it up, their AI is actually able to have you speak in thousands of languages in that video, and they do so naturally, where your mouth actually moves like you're speaking Mandarin, or you're speaking Chinese, you're Cantonese, you're speaking English, Spanish, whatever it is. What if I told you also that driving a car, kind of like, um, did you guys see Black Panther? Yes. Okay, so Shuri, right, Shuri, amazing scientist, she is in Wakanda, somewhere supposedly in Africa, and Black Panther is in uh, South Korea, and she gets into this holographic car and starts driving this holographic car through the streets of South Korea. While we don't have a holographic car, things have been done that are similar. At the NVIDIA Developers Conference this year, they had someone on stage wearing a virtual reality headset driving a car that was parked outside. So the point I'm making here is that science fiction is slowly not fiction. It's becoming reality. And that is a huge sea change and a huge opportunity for all of us. So one of the things I want to do is I don't want to get too deep and heavy here. I want you guys to have fun. Okay, so we're going to play a little game that I call Real or XR, where I'm going to show you some photos up there, and I want people to guess. I want people to say if it's real or if it's XR. Okay, so um, let's see how you guys do. All right, first one. Oh, good. XR, wow, you guys are so good. I'm definitely talking to the Silicon Valley crowd here. <laughs> so this over here is called, she's called Siren, and she's a virtual human. She is powered by a real, she's powered by an actress that's doing real motion capture. Um, but if you can see something, if you can notice, you look at her hair and her face, right around when you get to her neck and her, and her like, uh, shoulders, there's something off. You're like, whoa, whoa, your brain just goes into this thing where it says, this is not real. And that's what we call the uncanny valley. But we're getting, you know, basically your brain says, she's not real, she's not human, something's off. That's the uncanny valley. But we're getting pretty close to crossing that valley. Okay, next one. Real or XR? Real. 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 <laughs> Sadly, it is real. <laughs> yes, uh, this is actually the real life human Ken doll. He lives between, I think, Spain and England and goes all around the world. But yeah, yeah. Some people fall for that one, I have to tell you. So, next one. Okay, real or XR? Real. Real. Okay, yeah, kind of evenly split. This one's actually real. Yeah, this is actually a random photo that my husband took in our backyard of this really strange butterfly or moth that looks like lettuce. Um, so I, I always include it in my talks and I'm like, this is so freaky. And people never know, never know. It's usually, this one's usually everyone's split. Okay, next one. 
Real or Asari? Look at the detail. Look at the detail in that picture. Most of the people I would say, 80% of the people I show this to, say it's real and it's not. Next one. It's not. It's not. This is real. <laughs> this is actually an exhibit, um, I think it was in Greece, that was done. Um, pretty amazing. Freaky, you know, kind of cool, if you ask me, but that's actually real. Next one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So, XR. So this is XR, guys. Um, this model is actually part of this group of models. Uh, has anyone heard of Little Michaela? Okay. So Little Michaela, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. She's awesome. She is not real. She's a CGI influencer that has over 1.5 million followers on Instagram. Books campaigns with Chanel with Kenzo, with Louis Vuitton, you name it, and she's not real. But she's a, she has a huge following. And the interesting part here is that the younger millennials and the Gen C are really open to her. They really like Lil Michaela because they don't have those preconceived notions. And the cool thing we tell about Lil Michaela, Lil Michaela is actually Brazilian, okay? She's Brazilian American. So if you look at Lil Michaela and how popular she is, and the fact that she is a Latina, I think that is powerful. I think that says something about how younger generations perceive, you know, diversity. Um, this model over here actually is part of Balmain's uh, latest campaign, Virtual Army, where they have her and they've got Shudagram, who's another CGI influencer on Instagram, uh, and they did a whole campaign, a whole spread with all these virtual models. Okay, next slide. She's real. Yeah, she's, she's real. That's Duki thought. Uh, she's a supermodel, quite famous, um, but sometimes people just don't know. They're like, this shootogram actually looks a lot like her. Real. Real. XR. These are some of the, um, actually, these are some of the stickers that you could, the AR stickers that you can use on Android. Okay, where you can place these stormtroopers all around, everywhere. It's just pretty fantastic. And this one's easy. Real, this is actually real. Yeah. But see, I, what I'm trying to do here is to kind of have you guys start thinking about how you know content is just changing and shifting. You know, your mind, you, you sometimes don't even know if something's real or not. Okay. Uh, and guys, the holograms are coming. This is pretty fantastic. You guys would not be able to tell necessarily who the hologram is. It's actually the girl in green. Um, this is a reporter from the Guardian that did a whole thing where she got volumetrically scanned and was able to interact with the hologram. Um, I personally have my own hologram, which you guys are going to be able to see at the end. Uh, there's going to be a snap code if you have Snapchat. There's going to be a snap code at the end where you're going to be able to snap the snap code and you're going to see a hologram of me in front of you. Um, so I think it's pretty cool that one of the first, literally what we consider the first, uh, the first volumetric video sent out through social media is of a Latina woman. And I'm not saying just because it's me, I just think it's powerful that that's the message. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, one of the things I started posting about this holographic project that I came up with, uh, it was 2016, uh, since I had a PR background, I started saying, how can I disrupt PR? What can I do? And I said, you know what, I'm gonna create a holographic press release. And I was like, how the heck do I do that, right? So I started Googling, doing research, and all of a sudden I find a 2015 uh, article from the Atlanta Day Book and doing an April Fool's joke, announcing a holographic press release service in 2015. Fast forward 2018, I made this happen. I made this happen with a group, a team of developers that believed in my idea and said, okay, we're gonna make this happen. <laughs> Yay, woo! Um, this, my industry is also changing the way you guys are gonna shop for things. So uh, one of the cool things I got to do a couple weeks that any of you guys can do is you can go to Facebook Messenger and go to Victoria Beckham's um, chatbot, you know, message her, <laughs> uh, and you'll have a chatbot talking to you, and they'll actually ask you if you want to try on some sunglasses. Uh, they're gonna, it's gonna open to a camera, and you're gonna be able to try on these really cool sunglasses and select different models and pre-order them directly there. You're gonna be able to try on, you know, nail polish. There's already apps for that. You're gonna be able to see how an engagement ring looks on, on you. You're gonna be able to see how earrings look on you. You're gonna be able to see hair color. You know, Sephora already has that when you're able to try on makeup, right? 
So all these things are changing the way we're purchasing and the way we're uh, providing things because it visualizes, visualizes it. Eventually, what you're gonna have are volumetric dress, dressing rooms, so you're a target, and they've already volumetrically scanned you, so you're actually just standing there and you're gonna be able to try on all these different clothes and actually see how they look on you without actually changing. This is crazy. Now this is coming, guys, I'm not kidding you. Futurist mindset. So I work as a futurist, and one thing that I've seen in the community is people saying, "How? what is a futurist? What does a futurist do? And I have my definition. They're like, no, that's not what a futurist does. And I want to tell you guys, no one owns the word futurist. We all have a right to be a futurist. Everyone here that is working in tech is a futurist. We all have futurist mindsets. So I want you guys to always think about that. You know, how, how are you looking at technologies and the changes that are coming and what they're doing to our industry? So everyone here is what I consider a futurist. What do I do what I do? Um, I do my work every single day for several reasons. And the most important reason are my children. I have three kids, two daughters. And I always say that I'm, you know, I'm breaking the virtual ceiling. That's what I'm doing. That is my goal. Because I don't want them to have to deal with some of the challenges I've done. I want to blaze the trail for them. Just like Noni de la Peña and Evelyn Menades have blazed the trail for me, I want to blaze the trail for my, for my children. Okay? And I think it's an, it's an amazing opportunity that we truly have to do this. All right? Um, I'm just going to go really quickly through these. So, uh, in the future, what, how are we going to engage with content? This is what I call spatial computing. Um, this is actually a picture, and you can go to the next one. Uh, this is actually a picture from uh, a TV show on Hulu called The One, uh, The First, sorry about the first people that go to Mars. And they have these glasses. They put on these glasses that look just like, you know, like this young lady's glasses over there, really casual. They put on these glasses and they're able to kind of engage with content. Instead of you being in front of a computer typing, they're actually able to kind of manipulate content in your space. And they're able to, they're able to go between VR and AR. This is already being worked on. Facebook confirmed they're working on AR glasses. Huawei said yesterday, oh, yesterday they're releasing AR glasses in a couple of days. Apple is going to be releasing those probably 22, 2022, that's what I'm guessing. Magic Leap, who I work for, uh, also has amazing glasses. So this is already being worked on. Um, before I end, I want to kind of use this quote from Neil Gibson. He's a sci-fi author. He says, the, fu the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And I think that that is our mission, to distribute technology evenly. The pictures here on one side are of uh, Blade Runner, mm -hmm. of Noel and Neil, and the other picture is of Toronto in 2017. So, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And then uh, my staff can you come up to staff for a second? Okay, if anyone wants to see my hologram, uh, feel free to snap that and kind of I'll pop up in front of you. Be nice to me, okay? <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm looking forward uh, to being replaced by a virtual anchor. <laughs> right? That's coming. Uh, thank you so much, Kathy. And